Welcome back uh, to my series on heaven and hell, particularly as we study the doctrine of hell. I am Pastor Howard Sloan, missionary at large with Westminster Biblical Missions, and today we're going to look at the topic of why hell is necessary. Uh, and so to begin, we're going to read from Revelation 21, verses 5 through 8. Revelation 21, verses 5 through 8. And he was seated on the throne, said, Behold, I am making all things new. And also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. As for the cowards, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now, we've already talked about the fact that hell exists. Uh, we've talked about some of the alternatives that have been proposed to hell, showing that not only hell exists, but that hell is eternal. And we gave a definition of hell, but let's review that. Hell is a real place created by God for his glory, where the devil, his angels, and unregenerate sinners receive everlasting punishment and are eternally separated from the benevolent presence of God. So let's examine not only that hell exists, but why hell exists. In other words, to put it in a different way, what is the purpose of hell? Well, we're going to look at four things out today. Satan's rebellion. We're going to look at the sinner's sin, saints' rec sanctification, and sovereign glory. First, let's look at the saints' rebellion, Satan's rebellion. Before any human being ever sinned, the first rebellion occurred. That was Satan uh, and uh, those who uh, fallen angels who went with him. And it happened in the heavenlies. Jude 6 tells us the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling. He has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Satan and some of his angels with him rebelled against God. This is an act that God could simply not allow to go unnoticed. He could not allow it to go unpunished, and thus he prepared a place of punishment for them. Matthew twenty five forty one. But then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, and do eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. We've looked at that verse before. Revelation 20, verses 9 and 10. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan and all who fell with him will experience an eternity of punishment along with those who remain in their sin and rebellion apart from the grace of Christ. That is the simple truth of the matter. Another reason for hell to exist is the sinfulness of sin. Again, back to the passage that we just read from. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Sin, rebellion, and wickedness will receive their just punishment. Let's be clear. It is sinners who are sent to hell. They are real people. Family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, 
uh, the people that you bump into in the store, they are sent to hell and God is just in doing so. Revelation 16, 5 through 6. And I heard the angel in charge of the water say, Just you are, O Holy One, who is and who was. For you brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. Our third point is the sanctification of the saints. How is it that we can say that hell fulfills any purpose for the saints, let alone for their sanctification? After all, we as saints have been redeemed. Thanks to the work of Christ, we will never, ever, ever go to hell. So what could hell possibly do for us? Well, Hell, in one sense, spurs us on to perseverance. Matthew 5, verses 29 and 30. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. Yes, it's true. Without a doubt, those who are in Christ will never experience the fires of hell. But that's not to mean that we are to sit back and to go on spiritual cruise control until we arrive safely on the other shore. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Edward Donnelly, in his work on heaven and hell, says, Our Lord is telling us that we are to never treat hell as irrelevant. The perseverance of the saints means persevering in repenting, persevering in believing, persevering in obeying. Remind yourself, if I go ahead and commit this sin, I am in fact telling the Lord that I want to go to hell. It's a pretty powerful statement. The thoughts of hell should also create in us a sense of contentment. 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. Now there is great gain in godliness with contentment. For we brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out of this world. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content. Have you ever thought about hell and had it be a source of contentment for you? The fact that even though we may not have much, even though our world may be falling apart, even even though things are not going the way we want them to. There is one unchangeable truth. Those of us who are in Christ are spared of the fires of hell. And that should make us content. For we have the gift of eternal life in heaven with God forever. Donnelly says again, we are surrounded by multitudes who are infinitely, eternally worse off than we are, millions on the way to hell. When next you think that life is treating you roughly and that God could have arranged your circumstances more lovingly, take a look into the pit of hell and remember I was going there but now I am not. Instead, I am on my way to heaven, for God has saved me. What are all the disappointments, pains, and sorrows of this life? 
They are nothing in comparison with what I deserve. Nothing compared with what I will inherit. Also, believe it or not, the saints in heaven will praise God for satisfying his wrath eternally in hell. Revelation 11, 16 through 18 says, And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name, both great and small, for the destroying of the destroyers of the earth. Right now, it might not seem possible for us to be that excited about God executing us wrath on people, but we will realize in true worship that it is necessary and good. The last point we're going to look at is the sovereignty of God's glory. God receives glory both in heaven and in hell. It's easy for us to believe that God is glorified in heaven, but maybe not as easy for us to believe that God is glorified in hell. After all, it is a horrible place of eternal torment. How could God be glorified in that? Well, we need to remember all of God's character in order to understand that completely. Isaiah 5.16 But the Lord of hosts is exalted in justice, and the holy God shows himself holy in righteousness. How about Revelation 11, verses 17 and 18? saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who was and who is, for you have taken your great power, we just read this, remember that, and begun to reign. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty. Why are they? Why are the saints giving thanks? The saints are giving thanks because God's glory is manifest in this judgment. Jim Hamilton in his uh, article, How Does Hell Glorify God on NineMarks.org says, Hell is about God keeping his word. That God sends the wicked to hell shows God to be faithful and just. If God does not enforce the terms he has set, he does not keep his word and he is unfaithful. If he does not send the wicked to hell, he has not upheld his own righteous standard and he has not been just. If he does not punish rebels in hell, the righteous are not vindicated. In fact, if there is no hell, we might conclude that the righteous were wrong for having trusted God. That's, that's pretty powerful. How about this from Tim Conway and his, his message on hell is necessary. God will be glorified in every soul. If you will not glorify him actively by good works, you will glorify him passively by a demonstration of his power. Finally, let's hear a quote from Ed Donnelly again. We must remember also that hell exists for God's glory and hell. And we can say that this only in trembling, in trembling reverence. God's glory will be unveiled in new and amazing ways. His kingly authority will be seen more clearly than has ever been possible before. Fresh aspects of his holiness and justice will be revealed to his wondering people. Well, I, I hope that this helps you to see just some of the reasons that hell is absolutely necessary. There are those who don't understand why hell is even necessary, why God must do what he does, but we see here that there are plenty of reasons that God does what he does. Now, next time we're going to examine the idea uh, of levels of punishment in hell. So until next time, this is Pastor Howard Sloan, Missionary at Large with Westminster Biblical Missions. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. 
Thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I want to remind you to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, for more information about my ministry with, as a missionary at large and with Westminster Biblical Missions, you can check out my website at missionaryatlarge.webs.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Howard Sloan Missionary at Large or on YouTube if you haven't found me there already, Howard Sloan Missionary at Large. For more information about Westminster Biblical Missions or to donate, please go to wbminc.org. O -R -G, and you can click on the donate button. Please use the general fund to donate. Thank you.